So uh, this is group one and this is our group two. And this is our camera setup and the camera captures images that are then used in our machine learning and computer vision algorithms. So as you can see in group one, this is the first sensor block. sensor block of group one and on the other hand here group two we have a sensor block as well now we're going to create this project so we're gonna log into uh, our website and uh, create a new project we're gonna enter the project to settings so it's name, uh, start date, end date, and we're gonna select the number of groups, which in this case were two. Uh, then we're going to enter uh, each group's settings. So we're entering two sensor blocks in group one, as we saw in the video previously. Uh, the interval size refers to uh, the time it takes between uh, one sensor reading and the next. And here, for example, we have um, maximum humidity and minimum humidity. And uh, this is a range that is specified by the user. And if the uh, actual sensor readings are beyond that range, then the user is notified. Now we are entering the name um, of the settings for this group. So we can then later select it instead of every time having to fill this form out. And we're filling out the associated camera ID for this group. And quickly we're going through group two's settings. Now we're entering the sensor node names for each um, uh, group. So in the first group, we had two sensor nodes. So we're entering two names. And these names are the MAC addresses of the uh, ESP32. And we're doing the same thing for group two. Now we are connecting to the sensor node access point from the Wi-Fi networks we have available, as you can see. And we're going to enter the web server of the access point and choose the Wi-Fi that we need to connect to, which in our case is the MiFi, which is called Airbox 6A44, and we're entering its password. Um, and now the ESP is no longer uh, an access point, so we can't find it. And we're going to enter the interval time that we want the readings to be taken in. Now to deploy our intelligent uh, component, we're using an IP camera mounted on a moving car that we have configured ourselves. Uh, the camera moves and captures images of the plants, as you can see. And this is us deploying in the greenhouse. Uh, the Raspberry Pi accesses the camera stream and captures images uh, for every set interval. And then the camera uploads this to the cloud storage. Now that we have created this new project, let's try to visualize it in a real life setting. In our project settings, we created two groups. Let's say that group one is the first row of plants and group two is the second row of plants. In group one settings, we created two sensor nodes, as we can see here. And in group two, we created one sensor node, as we can see here. And these are the names associated with each sensor node. And indeed, when we go to the website, we can see that the name of the project that we have created is actually there and now selected, and that there are indeed two groups associated with this project. Now, since we have group one selected, we can see now that we have the two sensor nodes that we have created. And if we select the second group, we should see one sensor node with the naming convention that we have seen in the photo. Now let's go back to group one and explain our results. So now that we have selected the average, this means that the results we see are an average of the two sensor node readings. So these two sensor nodes take readings of temperature, humidity, soil moisture, and pH. We average them and then we display the latest sensor readings here. And we also have in graphical form an overview of this data. So we have the temperature, the soil moisture, the humidity, and the pH. And we know the soil moisture is correct because we did take the soil moisture sensor out of the pot. And so as we can see, the soil moisture did go down correctly. 
Now, if we select one sensor node, then we're going to see the data associated only with that node. So now, since we have F8 selected, then we are taking, uh, we're seeing the readings taken from this spot. Now, since group one had a camera ID associated with it, we can see the latest uh, image that the camera took for this uh, group. And our algorithm's output was that the growth stage of these plants are fruiting. And this is indeed correct, because if we look closely, we can see the cucumbers here and the small little yellow flowers. And our algorithm also told us that the leaves are unhealthy. And we can see that this is also correct, because we can see the leaves are brown and they're drooping. So the algorithm does work well. Um, now we can also generate a report by selecting a start date and an end date. And this report will have all of this data of the temperature, soil moisture, humidity, and pH levels in a CSV um, file. If we also look at the notifications, we can see that we were notified because uh, the expected range, for example, for the moisture sensor was 70 to 100 percent from the settings that we have selected. But what was actually detected was 26 percent. Uh, and this is the sensor uh, block name associated with this error, as we can see. When a sensor reading is out of range, we also get notifications on the email. We can also change the settings that we have already created. So we can change the ranges and all the other things that we have selected. And we can also change the project settings. We can see, of course, the settings that were already applied and we can change them and then press here and, and they will change. We can also choose to share a project with a user. So here I'm going to enter an email and share it with uh, Samir. And so what should happen is that Samir should receive an email, which as you can see, he just did, uh, in order to allow him to register to our uh, website. So I'm gonna log in. Uh, so now that we're on Samir's account, we can see that the project that I shared with him and the groups, the corresponding groups are uh, indeed 